声啊！你在边度啊？你快啲走啦 ！My character is the Chinaman who comes to America and faces not only the developing of the West and the struggle, but his own demons, his own weaknesses, his own his own problems. Wu's a bright guy. Wu could have learned a lot of English. Squidgen. Wu refused to learn any other words as a way of protecting himself from having to experience trust uh, of, of anyone other than his own race, in despite of which he became friends with Swearingen. What is it, Wu? I think Wu was not so much interested in people liking him or just surviving, but he wanted power. And he knew that Al could help him get power. Tongyun. He identified with Al, and he knew that Al identified with him in a way. Wu is the first Chinese in camp, first Chinaman, and he's well respected by his own. But um, Hearst is coming to town, and he's sent forth his emissary, Walcott, whose aide is the Chinaman Li. My character came into town representing the San Francisco Tong. I am now trying to take over the Chinatown alley and squeeze my rival, who is Wu, out of business. I use terrorism, basically fear and terror. I don't care if my whores die. I represent truly the ruthlessness and the utter horror of a human being that is trying to keep his overhead low. These use methods that defy all our concepts of justice. He went against our articles of war and community. He disgraced us. My disregard for life and death is something that he doesn't tolerate. Even though he deals in exactly the same thing I deal in, he deals in it in a more humane way. And he really despises the fact that I'm so cold-blooded and ruthless. We have a bit of a problem with Mr. Wu, who has a feud with uh, another Chinaman, and Mr. Lee, who's not a, not a good man. In order to protect Wu from Mr. Lee and to protect Wu from himself, we've put Wu in one of the whore's rooms, and we have had um, a rotating watch between Doherty, Adams, myself, and Davy, the bartender. Wu escapes. We are one of a proud culture, and because of that, anybody who disrespects us, to, you know, denigrates our existence, we, we have to reply. And that's what Wu does. Wu has been disgraced. The final conflict comes between Wu and I, and, and um, David kind of described the scene as the old world meeting the Industrial Revolution. I think you guys are scared to death by what you're doing, but it makes you brave. So, it, 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 in other words, if, I, if we can see the fear, in you, because, and the reason is because you're overmatched, and the only thing that moves you is this guy has taken care of you, Woo, since, since you came over here. So you're going to do it, but you're not optimistic about the outcome, okay? And, and some, sometimes that makes people very brave. And we'll take it from here for now. Here we go. Okay, so he hits him, he goes down. You guys come running down here. Scared that, scared it. Right? Dead. And now Lee comes out, boom, he sees him. Take on. Boom, nails that guy, yeah. boom, he's shot. When Burns sees Lee coming towards him, what he sees is almost an operatic apparition. I think Lee should be coming down. And when David showed up on the scene, he gave me a direction that I'd never heard anyone give to anyone before. And he said, I want you to play the scene operatically and I didn't really understand what he said until he demonstrated the action 
of me walking down this long alley and a very long take. And uh, he said it should feel grandiose. And by the time I'd walked that 40 yards down that alley, it felt grandiose and operatic. It felt huge. Is, what he is is fake. And he's, and, 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 and he's not only going to kill Wu, but he is showing everybody. You know, you're not dealing with a reality here. You're dealing with a force. Uh, so that the, the deterrent effect is what motivates, you know, the, the kind of uh, Baroque presentation he makes. But visually, it'll be very powerful. Yeah, it will be. If you trust your intentions, that allows you to try all different kinds of methods of suggestion. I've never been to an opera in my life, and if I'm lucky, I'll never go. But... Uh, and so I don't even know what that means, but it, I think it has to do with a kind of uh, a, a seeming exaggeration of intention. And sometimes exaggeration of intention uh, is a way of acknowledging the heightened importance of a moment. That's right. <laughs> what I was trying to get those two guys to do was to elevate the, uh, themselves to be announcing by their physical carriage uh, that this was an important moment and that they were, they were playing for high stakes. And after the first rehearsal, I couldn't have imagined playing that scene any other way. Johnny's been sent on a mission to get a pig. He comes out of the meat locker and looks down Chinaman's Alley and sees Wu and Mr. Lee having a standoff. Jesus Christ! All Chinese but Wu! Stay put! Johnny knows Wu's not supposed to be there. He doesn't know exactly what to do, but he rushes towards what looks like imminent bloodshed. Oftentimes, an actor will get bogged down in business. What I was trying to do was to suggest that if one submitted oneself to that moment, instead of its being a problem, it would become an opportunity, which is to show, which is, you know, you put, the, you, you put the pig, you grab the gun, you try and grab the guy, you try and do it all at once, and the effort to do it all at once is of the essence of humanity. Where's the pig? There's a pig. Jeez! <laughs> well, I think what you want, but give me something so I can show. I think if you've got it like this, what you must do is have your hands free, right? So you're going to have to take the pig and go like this and try and grab okay. Wu. Okay. To make oneself uh, available to be God's so fool, to show, you know, I'm the boss. And here I am, you know, making straw into a pig and, you know, and, and falling on my ass. Fucking woo! Fucking woo! Now, how stupid does that look? That breaks down the sense of separateness between, say, the author and the boss and, and the work, which is, at a different level, a breaking down of the sense of separateness of the gun and the pig and woo. You're like Christ crucified with a fucking pig yeah. trying to drag Wu away. Whoa! God damn. So let's try with the pig. It's a tough way to make an obscene amount of money. <laughs> I love physical comedy, and that's an incredible prop. To juggle a pig, get a gun, and pull Wu into the gym. Christ! All Chinese but Wu stay put! Now I'll be struggling. To balance the pig yeah. and get I the am. fucking, I don't know what to try to do. Yeah, and okay. try to get and try to get I'm the trying. fucking gun out too. Okay, whoa! Okay. Get over here. I'll and now come. No, you gotta yeah. come for him and grab him too. Whoa! And keep the gun on this guy. I think that's sort of Johnny. He's trying to take care of everything at once. He doesn't want to make any mistakes. He doesn't want to drop the pig. He doesn't want Wu to die. So hopefully there's some sort of, uh, there'll be some comedy in the, in a very intense scene. God. When you go down to the set, you always want to be willing to respond to 
either the suggestions of an actor or the director, or also to the renewed stimuli of a different environment. And I try to be open to all of that. Right. Dave, I have an idea. Let me show you. Please. That who decides, okay, I am staying here. Because the only reason I'm keeping it is this, because I can't go back to China without. This is like my passport. Yeah. Because you can't go Let's back. Let's do that at the end of the year. At some point. Do you want to, should we do it in this episode? No, no. no. What, what, I don't know what you have planned, but I mean, at some point. That's good. I said, sometime in the this, in this series, we got to do that. Wu cuts off his you know, Q, and, and David said, oh, David got excited about it and said, oh yeah, let's do that this season. Let's do that in the next shot. You mean this to be a very serious yeah. and solemn indication on your part, yeah. that you appreciate what he did, and that he can consider you a full ally, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Right. And Swearingen, in his attitude, you would be, woo, wonderful, right. wonderful. I have no fucking idea right. what the import of that is, but I'm right. going to act as if I give a rat's ass. Right. That a boy. I will. brought David a chicken. Hand. Right. Right. <laughs> David. Yeah. yeah. That'll no. be good. That's a great finish. The amount of knowledge that he has about literature and writing. All that is great, but I think the person has to be underneath all of that. And David is one hell of a passionate guy. Don't fucking arbitrate for credit. <laughs> <laughs> Without that, the words can mean, mean nothing. Anybody can learn words. But I believe uh, it's what's in his heart that's, uh, that's essential to all of our characters. And David understands the core of human beings in their most trying situations. Back rope! And action! Lay crops on you all! Lay! Oh, Johnny! Set woo, stay put! Lay! Woo! Woo! Son you all! Woo! Get with me now. Get with me. David directed the scene in such a way that he is bodily so close to woo that if I try to shoot woo, I could possibly injure the white man whose consequences would be horrendous. That staves off the conflict that's going to happen in the future. Wu not understanding the complex nature of what's happening in America and how parties emerge and people negotiate, because uh, Wu, Wu is from the old school, to say. Uh, Al has to come in and kind of like save his ass, you know. Hurst without saying so, gives Swearingen the permission to say to Wu, if you can show your mettle against the other Chinaman, you got a job here. As to your man and mine, I would need some demonstration before making my final choice. Uh, your man would have to prove out. We have a real shit storm in the Chinaman's alley. Kill a rooster, Wu, and offer him up a sacrifice. Then start honing your weapons for tonight's demonstration. Silas and Dan and I dress up in this our Chinese garb and go through and systematically kill as many of Lee's men as we can. It's a sign that he can be trusted with the most important thing that he can be called on to do, which is to risk his life. And he's doing it for Wu, which for Johnny, who's a country boy from the South, you know, he's a... Uh, He's willing to do it. You don't want to do a killing like this without some minimal indication on the part of this gentleman mm -hmm. that he needs killing. In other words, if he's just standing there supervising the game mm -hmm. and Burns comes up and puts a hatch in his back, Burns is a shit bird. Well, what I was just thinking is, you just reach in and as you're collecting the ante, smack him in a mug, you know? I'd say that's why they call it gambling, Nimrod. Well, which we and, like here, because you speak Chinese. And so then after we see the smack, okay. then, then, then the audience will dislike him enough to... Okay. Uh -huh. Right, okay. Mm. That's mm. right. Mm. We'll just go to the next. Mm. One is with Lee. We have Lee, we have the whore, and then we have Lee. We have that work out also. And we okay, have, uh, let's have the girls come back up, please. We have four options. All right, suppose the camera were over yeah. here. He said it's back over here, right? Yeah. I think what you would want is, uh, it, what, what, what we would want is a hero kind of shot of you uh, up here looking right at the camera. 
Like, oh, okay. Like three inches from the camera. Do you want me laying down? Though? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Laying, laying on my back. Yeah, and she, and uh, the other thing is, if you have the pipe here and there's smoke coming out of right. it, and your head is, you know, your eyes are just glazed looking right here, okay. that, that that'll get the message okay. through too. Okay. All right, David. That sounds fine. The wedding with the brutality is a powerful juxtaposition of images. I mean, and that's something that David always uses. He'll never let a moment be too beautiful or too ghastly. Who has to somehow change his, his like a like a like a snake shedding his skin and become a new person because that's what America was that we come to America and we become something different. We become Americans whatever that is. Uh, by the end of the piece his friendship with Swedgen allowed him to expand his vocabulary. And now, when he himself transcends his prejudice and says a new word, America, the audience, too, in bonding with him, transcends its prejudice. Switching. All right, Woo. <clears throat> it's sort of like symbolizing taking off the chains that have been put on us as Chinese who had come to America. You know, after we had contributed so much, what is it that we need to do but to de de deface ourselves? And by defacing ourselves, becoming something new. In the story of Deadwood, I believe that we all are cutting off our cues as we grow older and become wiser.